Paul Carrington, taking you home on Pulse 2. Needles and pins and the searches, of course, right here at Pulse 2. It's 25 past two. A very good afternoon from me, Paul Carrington. Today's uh, sort of standards, because, you know, variety these days. I suppose it's sort of Britain's isn't it? That's right, and it's all musical. On Britain, Britain's Got Talent, they do have the, what we would have called in those days speciality acts. Yes. Um, now I don't know what you... Mind you, they still don't go out on tour like that, do they? No. I don't think no, so. Not You're really. not going to have the dog acts on tour, really. It's, uh, everything's musical these days. Everything's um, high-end. It's a lot of production, yeah. uh, you know, light strobes, everything. Everything we didn't have in the early days. Yeah, everything that you would like to have done then... Think, you know, but, uh, to a certain extent, I think things have gone too far. I mean, everything's co- choreographed with an inch of its life yeah. these days, and it takes the heart out of it slightly for me. It's fantastic shows. They look great. <laughs> the uh, the effects are wonderful. The money that's put into it is unbelievable. We didn't have an act when we won nowadays. We did six songs, got screamed at, and got off. It will exactly, yeah. But there was a lot more spontaneity. There yeah. isn't any, There isn't too much spontaneity now, and there's not too much live music now either, because so much is recorded and put down on a hard disc before, which we don't do. We and never, it's all auto tuned the vocals and things. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Well, in those days, it would have been called cheating, but uh, now it's just the way yeah. things are. It's high technology, you know. So the, the, the gig tonight, for example, are you sort of, is it sort of still quite a raw sound? You know. well, yeah, it's ours. Yeah, the, the the most elaborate thing we do, apart from use, using the usual effects at the desk, like the echo reverb mm. and things like that, is that we use a guitar synthesizer, which can add um, string sounds to uh, the big ballads, things like that. And that's, But that's played live. Yeah. Spencer James, who is our lead singer, has been for the last 28 years now, he uh, has a guitar synthesizer and does all these effects with his foot pedal. But all the, every note from the synth, all of those string sounds that come out have to be pl- played live like yeah. any instrument. We're going to play uh, When You Walk in the Room in a few moments, which was your, as I mentioned before, your, your first uh, venture with the, uh, the, the, the the searchers. Prior to that, though, it was uh, you were with Cl- uh, Cliff Bennett and the Rebel Rousers. I certainly was, yeah, from mid-61 to mid-64. Mm. And, great, great, uh, great education for music. That was a fabulous band. He yeah. was and still is a great singer. It was a... Uh, it was the one band. It was the first band I wanted to join. Desperately wanted to be a part of that that band. I mm. eventually talked my way into it. They didn't want me, but I talked my way into it. Yeah, that early period uh, where the Beatles hadn't yet made their mark. Mm. You know, there's all the, the explosion of of of, uh, of groups and people who wanted you know make music. What what was it like being there at the moment where effectively the British music scene just exploded? Well, it was nice. It was quite exciting, but lost on us to a certain extent because we were so close to it. I never quite realised how big it was going to be and how I should have hung on to those memories and to everything about it. I mean, I've lost so many things. I mean, if I'd have known that it was still going to be such a huge deal all these decades later, I mean, I'd have slimy creeped to the Beatles a lot more than I did. <laughs> I'd, have, I'd have grabbed a few items of memorabilia that I could have uh, had a pension with. I mean, I, I had a... I always had a, a letter from Dennis Wilson of the Beach Boys. So yeah. we, we worked in... Uh, in the States in 1965 and we kind of kept in touch after that and got a couple of letters from him and one of them said we've just been at the studios we just made a fantastic record called Good Vibrations this was a handwritten letter from one of the Beach Boys which would have been worth it would have been tens worth of thousands, thousands of, of pounds, pounds. <laughs> in fact I remember it so well because in, in fact at the time we wrote it uh, that didn't come out as the next single. God Only Knows came out as the next single. Right, yes. Um, but I remember the letter. I've looked for it religiously over the years, but I've obviously thrown it out thing with is, some other stuff. The thing is, Frank, if you remember it, you could write it down and uh, then uh, pretend. Reproduce it, pretend. <laughs> no, I, I can't do that. I'm far too honest for my own Good lad. Well, we're going to hear a tune, then we'll, back, we'll be back for another natter in just a few moments. So this is your, uh, from, from 1964. Your first uh, record with the Searchers. You're playing bass on this one and also vocals as well. Yeah, yeah, got a rare um, dual lead vocal. Uh, Mike Pender was the actual singer in those days, and uh, but when I joined, they did, I think Chris decided that um, we should try for a slightly stronger edge on the vocals and a different, slightly different sound. So Mike and I sang the lead vocal in unison and. Uh, it's amazing. I can clearly hear my voice on that. Let's you know, have a listen it. to it right now. It's uh, Pulse 2. Frank Allen from The Search is my special guest this afternoon. And here it is then from 1964, When You Walk in the Room. Pulse 2 is The Searchers. Frank Allen from The Searchers is my special guest in the studio this afternoon, just ahead of the boys' gig at uh, Kings Hall tonight in Ilkley. 
Uh, from 1964, then, uh, that was uh, Frank's first um, adventure with the, uh, the the searchers there. Not only uh, playing bass, but also uh, on vocals as well. And we were just chatting about that. So that's the most covered of your of all your songs. Yes, yeah, so many people have made versions of that, um, and all the uh, versions have escaped me. I mean, the one that always comes to mind is is Paul Carrick. Um, um, Agnetta did a version of it on, she our, really? on our album. Yeah, on the last album. I mean, there must be hundreds of versions of that around yeah. by different people. I think. Uh, 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 I think um, didn't the Bay City Rollers or oh, Child did a version Child right? from Child. the 70s yeah, flipping that's egg right. um, there's they some did, records yes. the girl from the Bangles did it um, oh, oh Susanna yeah. Hoffs yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. so many people yeah uh, it's it's one of those songs that is instantly recognisable it, yeah. it's, it's it's the perfect pop song really mm. isn't it yeah you can catch there's you can catch a version of it uh, two versions of it by Bruce Springsteen on YouTube there's, he's doing it at the Spectrum in Philadelphia from mm. about three years ago and he's uh, also there's a, a video of it on that from uh, his last show in of his last European tour in Kilkenny in Ireland yeah who wrote the song Jackie DeShannon yeah who also now, recorded Needles and Pins but she didn't write I was one. just about to say she did a version of Needles and Pins as well but they, she did the original version of it the, but it it's so, written by Sonny Bono and Jack Nitsche. Yes. The distinctive bass um, bit at the beginning that, that uh, obviously is, is your mark. Did you, is that, is that, is that your bits? Did, did you write that? No, I didn't. It was on the original. On the original. Yeah, it yeah. was the original start. In fact, we don't start with that bass bit on stage now. We go straight into the riff. You right. know, one, two, three, four, down. Down, down, yeah. Yeah, but uh, no, it was, it was, we, we copied the original on that and mm. it works. It's it's iconic. Yeah. So that's obviously going to be played tonight at King's Hall. Oh, Hall. Yeah. oh and yeah. And some. Yeah. Gosh, I mean, we had, um, what did we have, about 14 hits in the Guinness Book of Hits singles? I was just having a look on uh, on everyhit.com. This only well, obviously does uh, up to uh, top 30 or top 20, I think. Well, um, we had Sweet, 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 Sugar and Spice, and Needles and Pins, Don't Throw Your Love Away, Someday We're Going to Love Again, When You Walk in the Room, What Have They Done to the Rain, um... Uh, you're doing very well here you do, the love. these he's are all no in chrono- chronological order you're doing yeah, extremely well it's... he's got no love um, when I get home yes t- um, uh, take me for what I'm yes, worth yes take it or leave yes. it yes have you ever loved somebody brilliant and of course Love Potion Number no. 9 was never a single here biggest hit we ever had in the States yeah. Bumblebee was a hit in the States only an album track here oh, Sweet Nothings which we don't do on stage was a hit on Phillips because it was one of the live recordings at the Star Club Bren- no, Brenda uh, Brenda Lee was Brenda Lee, yeah it? that's yeah. right yeah yeah. Marvelous. yeah we're very lucky and of course all the album tracks in those days were more or less Re, uh, treated like singles things like Farmer John ain't gonna kiss you yeah. um, you know so we're lucky big catalogue to so we're, we're gonna hear all those lovely records later on uh, tonight at uh, Kings Hall in uh, Ilkley a little bit further forward you're you're going on a, a wider tour uh, New Zealand yeah, we got news that we've already done Australia this year. At the end of January, we went off to Australia for six weeks, and they wanted us to stay out and go out to uh, New Zealand. But we've had to put a limit on the time away because you would never get home. Yeah, you know, we six weeks in Australia. It's packed with with uh, shows. We did thirty shows in the six weeks, and um, Australia. You know, we could stay there for another two weeks and they'd be perfectly happy. But we, you know, we wanted to get home. So we said, no, six weeks is it. We can't do it. So um, this other company in New Zealand decided to bring us back because we we did a tour of, uh, did a little bit in New Zealand last year with Jerry. We did two weeks um, sharing a bill with him. Yes. And uh, our part of the show went down so well, they decided to take a chance on our all evening shows, which mm. is the kind of thing that we everyone is used to over here. You know, like the show tonight, we go on stage, we do an hour, we have a 20 minute interval, then we go and do another hour and we mm. do more or less the whole history of the searchers in the yeah. hits, the B-sides, the album tracks, and some stories about everything that's happened along the way. And this time, they're giving us a chance to do that out in New Zealand. So I'd like to think that it's going to be a success. Brilliant. And you're back with uh, Jerry and the Pacemakers later on in the year, aren't you, with the, uh, the, the Solid 60s, 60s the 60s Gold, gold tour. tour? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the dates are all on our website at the moment, so yeah, it's, people should get in and get their tickets because it was so successful last mm. year. That's oh, why they've decided to do a second run. We, we sometimes give tickets away for those. Those, those kinds of shows yep. and we gave tickets away mm. to, to your show a couple of weeks ago and uh, you know as soon as we, we do it like the cue to call mm-hmm. you know the play the bit of the record and all of a sudden, the Christmas we had a Christmas tree situation with the telephone yeah. oh, straight away yeah well we have a me- very mean popular. audience exactly <laughs> and, and them for nothing yeah. and, then not, and then not to have to pay for a ticket <laughs> exactly <laughs> when I do gigs it's a fiver to get in and ten quid to yeah. get out now we've got just <laughs> such a loyal uh, following you know people come along and they meet other people it's like a social club my, my, my friend Graham who I was telling you about before mm. he follows you all over Europe I 
was thinking of this fellow as a stalker. We had such great people. There's a guy <laughs> called Roy Clough, who's a, a, a avid searcher's aficionado. Yeah. If I want to know anything about ours, I get in touch with Roy Clough, and he <laughs> well, gives it, yeah, all the facts. Well, absolutely. Because they say if you remember the 60s, you weren't there, so you need someone else to tell you about yeah. what happened. Well, I remember most. I've written two books on it now, and my memory is pretty good. So that 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 saying is a bit, was well, a nice sound bite. It's a bit of a yeah. fallacy, though, because we were the total drug free band, and we, we bored for England. You know? <laughs> There's nothing nothing um, untoward about us. You know, I think I'm the only person I know in the world, apart from the rest of the band, who's never had a joint. You know? Oh, well, we can sort you out. Yeah, no problem with the next few moments. Well, I'm too old to start now. You know, I didn't start drinking until I was in my 30s. So, um, but, but it gives you, it, you know, we've kept our health over the years. Yeah. You do look terrific. I mean, we were in reception before, and, you know, I'm 20 years younger than <laughs> I look probably about the same age. Well, there you are. Thank you very much. I meant but, that you know, nicely. We, we've led a very uh, uh, moderate lifestyle, and I think that oh. does stand you in good stead because you keep your health a bit longer. I've always had good health, yeah. and um, you know you're you're fit to do the thing, and your brain doesn't get addled through um, noxious substances. Mm. So I've got no shame about it. Well, I, mean, I think I'm, I'm past it now, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if only. But lovely to meet you, Frank, and uh, good luck with the show tonight. Once again, it's at uh, the King's Hall in Ilkley. It's the Searchers, and uh, for the time being, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me on the show. Well, it's so rare we get into studios these it's days. It's to so meet you lovely. in the flesh. We have spoken before on mm. the phone and and, uh, and what have you, but not, not actually face-to-face. So play another uh, Searchers tune to get uh, the listeners in the mood for tonight. Uh, how about Don't Throw Your Love Away? Good choice. Here we go. Paul Carrington's Big Drive Home on Pulse 2.